Good morning, church. It's great to see you. I get to see you a few times a year for this long, but I'm here and I'm ready to go. Didn't Pete and the team do a great job this morning? Thanks so much, guys. Uh, Pastor Russell and Nikki spoke about myself and Tamara for a little bit, but we are truly blessed to have great pastors in Pastor Russell and Nikki. Don't you agree? Why don't we thank them as well? Well, um, this this message this morning, I guess, is the the thing that came to mind as I read our key scripture for 2021 for our theme. And I'll, I'm going to start with that scripture, Matthew. Uh, 13, 31 to 32. You should be familiar with it by now. And it says, He told them another parable that the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of, fe- of all seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree, so that the birds come and perch in its branches. There is, there is something incredible. There's so much in this passage of Scripture that is imp- should be important to us as Christians. Uh, this, this kingdom ethic that we would be people that plant something that would bless someone else, right? We would plant something that one day would grow and raise up and provide shade to another, right? That is the, the kind of the kingdom ethic that I get out of this when I read this and I think about that for this house and I'm thinking this is, this is center point, this is, this is us. And so our theme for 2021 is plant, plant or plant, but I will never be a plant sayer. I don't care how long, if I end up in the southern parts of Australia one day, who knows, I'm not saying plant. (laughs) Amen. (laughs) Do we have anyone in the room that loves their garden, loves plants? Uh, it, amongst the young adults community, there's been this revolution in indoor plants in the last couple of years. If you, if you had an event and said there's free plants for your house, you would have a full house. People coming to take those free plants and put them on their windowsills. I even found my dad propagating succulents when I last visited. And I, it was the most strange thing I'd ever seen. I was like, what has happened to you, dad? Do you have, He's like, these succulents? And he had this whole row of them. And I was like, what is going on? <laughs> and uh, I guess there's a bit of a hole since we left. You just got to look after someone else. But <laughs> I haven't become a plant dad yet because I'm busy being a real dad. And <laughs> I don't really need that extra responsibility right now. <laughs> but as I thought about it, I actually do remember a time where I did plant something. And it was in grade 12. And uh, we had this activity where I think you do it in your, your house group or your year level where you go do something productive for the school, you see a need and then you meet it. And my particular need to meet was to fill a little walkway that people used to cut through to get to the tuck shop quicker and it used to ruin this garden bed. So our, our goal was to plant a tree uh, that would one day block that space and also provide some greenery. And uh, so I, I remembered I planted this tree and I thought, I'm going to ask a mate of mine who works at that school still if he could take a picture of it and send it to me so I could see what it looked like after all these years. Now, a bit of maths for you and me at the moment. I think that's about 13 years ago. Um, we planted this little, I think it was a fig or a, I'm not great with trees, I'm, I'm going to be honest. You can choose when you see the photo. And this is the photo he sent through to me. Now, that space is actually, that's a whole stairwell, that's like seven or eight steps, and so it's a quite a large tree now, it's been well looked after, well maintained. Does anyone know what tree that is? A fig? A fig? A green fig? Oh, a Benjamina. There's something in that. And uh, as I described... This, this tree to this guy, I looked at that and I thought, oh, I'm pretty proud of myself. I had nothing to do with it, but I just planted it, right? And there's, there's power in planting. But he said something to me after I described it. He, f- he knew exactly which tree I was talking about. And I said, oh, I planted that. And he's like, oh, I thought it was just for, been there forever, was his words. He said, I thought it had been there forever. And I said, no, that, I planted that. And the reality is that sometimes in our lives, we can just think that things exist because they just have always existed. 
But the fact is that everything in our lives has been seed planted by someone else. Everything that we enjoy on our day-to-day, whether it be the technology in your life or the uh, advancements in society or the, the things to do with this community, they're all seed planted by somebody else that we are enjoying the shade of those branches. Think about, um, you know, things like, as Aussies, we love the story of the Anzacs, right? There was a, there was a price paid, there was a seed invested that bought our freedom for our day-to-day. Now, we have people that don't understand the price that was paid and we just think it's always been this way. But for anybody that's been around a little bit longer or understands the story, there was a seed and there was a price that was paid for the freedom and the life that we live today, correct? You know, I benefit from the seeds that my parents planted in my life and leaders and people that went before me, the the sporting teams they let me be a part of and trips they paid for, the music lessons they paid for for years. When I became a parent, I've always all of a sudden gone, whoa, like music lessons are expensive. (laughs) And my parents did it for me for years and they weren't like well off, but it was an investment and I just sit here and enjoy the things that I can do now from the investment that they planted, right? They just haven't been there forever. They were seed that was planted. So let me bring it a little bit closer to home. I'm going to talk a little bit in-house center point today. Is that okay? I, I feel great patriotism to this house, and I hope that you do as well. Um, but this church has been here now for nearly 100 years. It's 99 years old, and in 2022, in January, it will be 100 years old for Chermside AOG. That's pretty cool, right? And uh, this all began because somebody decided to plant a seed. Somebody decided to invest. And I'm going to take you, I'm going to show you a few photos this morning, take you on a little historical journey about this place, because I think it brings great context to what we're doing here today. So I want to put the first picture up to the very first pastors of this church, Jim and Elizabeth Hannah. Now Jim uh, was basically uh, a man who went to war and came back and decided to, I I would do this too probably, but start a dairy farm out in the middle of nowhere because I'd be like, get away, I'm I'm out. And so he started a dairy farm on this property here in Chermside. And uh, classic Christians, there was a bunch of Christians up on the hill, just up where the Wavell uh, OLA school is, that used to drive him nuts with the noise and singing they used to make. Not much has changed, right? (laughs) And so, uh, the story goes that Jim used to go outside the front of his house and get uh, kerosene jugs and smack them together to try and disrupt what they were doing and let them know that that, that he was upset with them, right? But one day, um, Jim's youngest child got quite sick and it was getting very desperate and the church or the the group of Christians that were kind of like a bit of an outreach um, decided to come down and offer to to pray for Jim's child, Jim and Elizabeth's child. Now, when they got to the door, Jim wasn't happy to see them and he was, he's like, get out of here, get off my property. But one of the people that was in the group recognized Elizabeth and they realized that they were cousins, which gained them access to the house. They came in and he said, all right, I'll let you pray for my daughter. In that moment, their daughter was instantly and miraculously healed. Yeah, give God a hand. So, from that point, because of that, Jim and Elizabeth, long story short, donated this place. Their house became the first church. And I think there's a photo of that next here. The house where the church first started, the home of Pastor Jim and Elizabeth Hannah. And that is where we begin. With an investment, with a seed planted, with someone who said, here this is it. But it doesn't just stop there, don't you reckon? Because it's been a hundred years and I'm going to take you through a little bit further. But this is the land that we meet on today. Eventually in 1947, the church here, the community, got together and decided to build their first church. This is on this site, And this was done entirely by volunteer labour and completed debt-free. 
There's another photo of it finished. Hamilton Road looking pretty good. And that's our first church building. How many know that there's seed planted there? There's hours, there's finance, there's emotion, there's faith invested in a project like that. That doesn't look like much today, but to back then, you know, this is, this is significant. A little bit later, they added a second one. There's no photo for it. Um, along the back side of it, same thing, volunteer labor, completed without debt. Great. Later on, you see, this, I've got a picture just of a family that's just uh, standing on a barrel, doing things around the properties. You can see Hamilton Road in the background. I don't know if that's Lenore's house just there or something like that, but it looks exactly the same. And um, just some people being around doing some things. This is 1954, planting, watering, nurturing, looking after what God started back in 1922. And in 1975, the second major project was undertaken here at Centerpoint Church. And the main church building in 1975 was built. We have a picture. Now, I'm going to help you get your bearings, but do you recognize that archway? I think in the background there you can see Cam and Andrea's house. That's not where Cam and Andrea live. They have privacy and secrets. They're okay. But <laughs> Here's another photo. You can see the archway there, the concrete through there. Um, and if you've got really good eyes, I'm sorry, the photos are just the quality that they are, you'll see our current <laughs> playground equipment right through there. <laughs> so we know that it's at least, what, 50 years old or something. 47 years old, um, and this was a big deal. This is, look at people lining up, you can see the, the, the veranda that we still have, the poles, and obviously there's been work done since then, and um, that's, that's seed. Can you imagine what's involved every time you do a building project, you get people involved, and you, 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 there's risk, there's counsel, there's all this stuff, there's prayer, there's... And this happened, and it's a great thing. But we'll move along. We know the story doesn't end there. In 1985, another project began. We have the next photo. This is the first half of what you see today. The first half of this current building. And um, I, I was going through this information, and I saw a quote on this photo in the comments, and it said... Um, this is a quote from somebody who was a part of that project in that era. It said, The concrete car park was laid in blocks of six by 2.4 metre slabs by members of the church. Early mornings, we would drop our kids off with their grandparents, lay a slab, pick up the kids after they were fed, and then go to work. You're in good company here today. People here, people that have been here, this is a, this is a house of, of planting, a house of investment, a house of people that have felt and identified with this house and brought, their, brought it onto their shoulders. That is sowing. You know, the car park that you and I drive into every Sunday and go, there's no car parks. But it's nice, you know, there's no potholes, it's, it's there and it's served a purpose for a very long time. Would you say that we're enjoying the shade of a seed that someone else has planted? We're perched in the branches of someone else's investment when we come in here every Sunday. But, and it can be quite easy to forget these things and just think that they were always there. But everything comes from seed. And eventually there's a, uh, a couple more photos of the second half of this project. Uh, that's the existing building. And then this, the second half of this project years later, which is where I'm standing now, the back of the church, um, which again is another story, which I'm going to get back to the details in that story a little bit later. But so many families over the last hundred years have planted, have invested, have sown seed, knowing that they may never ever see the shade of the branches of what they planted, but they planted anyway. And we come in here today and we enjoy 
the shade on, of those branches and the fruit of those trees. But this is our DNA. This is who we are as a house. A hundred years of people sacrificing, laying down, seeing that the next generation is still coming and planting their seed. Even more recently, you know, we benefit from the seed sown from people that are still in this room. You know, Russell and Nikki have been here, what, 10 years nearly now? Yeah? Nearly 10 years. And we, we benefit from the seed and the investment that they have planted over the last 10 years. You know, the people in this house, worship leading, teaching, running groups, giving finance, upholding vision and culture. You know, it's creating a platform for something else to be built upon for the next generation. And here in this room this morning and online, we benefit from what has not just been planted by heroes over the last 100 years, but by heroes that still stand in this room. This is who we are, church. This is how this goes on and makes a difference beyond ourselves. And I want to go back to the Scripture for a moment. Matthew 13, 31 to 32. He told him another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field, though it is the smallest of seed. Yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree, so that the birds come and perch in its branches. I, th- I hope I've convinced you this morning that we are 100% perched in the branches of someone else's seed. And we shouldn't feel bad about that. We should be thankful. We should be, re- be realising gratitude this morning, maybe even being a little bit inspired this morning. Because while we're sitting in the branches and enjoying the shade, we can also simultaneously begin to plant seed ourselves. Would you agree? Because that's what it's really all about. I saw a quote uh, on Instagram um, a couple of weeks before I preached, uh, came up with this sermon, and I'll put the picture up of what I saw. It says, the one who plants trees knowing that he will never sit in their shade has started to understand the meaning of life. And this can be a hard concept for us to understand sometimes because we want to see the return on our investment. We want to see what this becomes. So we just sometimes will, because of the fear of never seeing where this ends, we only invest and plant short-term things so that we will see its return. We struggle to maybe commit ourselves fully to maybe planting ourselves in a church because Seeing the return on being planted in the church doesn't come in six months. It doesn't come in a year. It comes in a much longer time than that. Being planted, letting your roots go down, seeing who you're growing next to, this all takes time. But we can uh, avoid that if we're not prepared to see the shade come from a long way away. You know, we can be guilty of planting seed and eating at the same time. It's like, I want to I plant this, but I also want to eat it. You know, this is great fruit, I could plant it and do something, but I kind of still want to eat it. But that's not the kingdom of heaven. That's not kingdom of heaven thinking. And if everybody had that attitude, there'd be no trees. If everybody was scared to plant something because we would never see its shade, there would be nobody planting anything. And thank goodness for the people that have the mindset over the past where they've said, I'm going to plant it anyway. Even though I'll never see the shade, even though I'll never see the branches or the fruit, I'm going to plant it anyway because we all benefit from those people. You know, there's, there was a time in the history of, of this church um, where there had been many years of, of sacrifice and investment and planting from a particular generation. Um, where the people who benefited from that sacrifice weren't prepared to plant again. And I want to tell you, I want to go back to this building project part two. Building project, um, the second half of this building. So like I said, in 1985, the first half of this building was built. Now, that is not a small feat. That was a, that was a large building. And at the time, the church was reasonably small. And so to pull off something like that, you need a large investment from each person. Are you following? And it's exciting. It gives you go, okay, I can do this, God. There's faith in this. And guess what? They pulled it off. They were like, 
I can see the fruit of this happening. I may never live to see it, but I'm going to invest it anyway. And they pulled off this building project. And guess what happened? The birds flew in. People came, they found rest, they found shelter in this house, they found community, they found a thriving church, and before too long, this church was packed wall to wall in the new building. And there'll be people in this room that know this story. And what was necessary was that the people in the room now would be prepared to plant again, because there was a harvest to be reaped, there's people loving this house, there's more to be done, we're not going to settle here. And so the project part two was put to the congregation, which was now this big, and to pull off the second half would have required an investment that was this big from each person. And the unfortunate thing that happened was the church at the time, the congregation, wasn't prepared to do it. Wasn't prepared to do it for whatever reason. Maybe it got a little bit too comfortable in the shade. Maybe the fruit tasted too good. And years and years went past. The church had to do things the hard way. Cut costs in all sorts of areas. Save, 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 save. There was a very large donation that actually made this thing happen. But it didn't happen in the hands of the congregation going, I'm going to plant again. I'm going to grab this seed that I have received and I'm going to put it back in the soil so that the generation to follow might benefit from it. And I think that's a shame. Because I want to be a part of those kind of things. There's a reward in heaven for those that will invest heavenly things in earth. They sat in the shade and ate the fruit. Some might call them shady Christians. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I don't, I don't want to become a shady Christian. It's comfortable being a shady Christian, but I don't want to reap what other people have sown and just let that be that. Eating the seed, but never planting it. We get comfortable with how things are. They're good for us now. I like where I sit. I like who I sit next to. I like there being car parks in the car park. And when we have enough, and when we get comfortable, we don't feel like there's any need to plant. If you've got a full silo of grain, I can imagine your motivation is pretty low to go out and do another, another season. But we've got to still keep planting, because when we have enough, we stop going for great. When we have what's good, we stop going for what's excellent. And we see this in Genesis 11, 31 to 32. It's a tiny piece of Scripture, and I'm going to read it. It says, Terah took his son Abram. This is the father of Abram. So we're way back, right? His, his grandson Lot, uh, grand, uh, grandson Lot, son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, the wife of his son Abram. And they set out from the Ur of the Chaldeans to go to Canaan. But when they came to Haran, they settled there. Terah lived 205 years and he died in Haran. Now, anybody that knows, I don't actually know why he was going to Canaan, but as you know the story, Canaan became the land that God had promised to Abram, the promised land. And they just so happened to be going there. And along the way, they found this place called Haran. And it says that they settled there there. Who knows what happened? Maybe it was really nice. (laughs) Maybe it was really comfy. Maybe all their needs were met. Maybe they had grain full in their silos. I don't know. But it says that Terah died in Haran. He never reached his destination, which was Canaan. It was Canaan of all places, and he never got there because he settled for Haran. And it turned out that it was a burden then and a responsibility for his own son, Abram, to fulfill. It was something that was left to the next generation. And we need to know this morning that it's very easy to settle, very easy to settle and to die in Haran. It's very easy to settle with what's comfortable and forego what's great and leave a burden to the next generation. Can you see what's playing out here? And can I encourage you this morning, don't just eat the fruit. 
Enjoy the space we're in, but be prepared to plant again. But be prepared to invest seed again. Don't settle here. Plant yourself here. There's a difference between settling here and planting yourself here. And we've got to mature and truly learn and plant, learn to plant things and give generously to things with no strings attached, like we actually believe that someone else will see its shade and see its fruit. Like we may never ever see what this becomes, but that's okay. That's okay. We only have a small amount of time on this planet. You will never ever see the fruit of every investment that you make. But does that stop us investing anyway? No, it doesn't. Because our God, He's, he's a generational God. You've read your Bible, you understand that not many things are, are accomplished in the life of one person. And if you want your life to expand past generations, it's going to involve seed. It's going to involve seed. We know that God does things in the short term too, right? We know He can just meet your needs with, a, with power and provision. But, you know, 4,000 years it took from Adam to Jesus for the story of salvation to unfold. 4,000 years. God's up to something. We're privileged to be a part of it somehow. Even the heroes of the Bible are just a link. Your King Davids, your, your everybody, your Solomons, they're all just part of the story. Are you satisfied with being part of the story this morning? Are you satisfied with being part of the story this morning? God wants us to plant something even though we may never see its shade. Like the families that have done here in Chermside over the last 99 years that planted something even though they may never see its shade. And I hope that, I hope seeing this stuff this morning, the photos and talking about the history, and hear me here, I hope it makes you feel smaller. And not in a belittling way. Not in a, oh, they're better than me way. I hope it just makes you feel a little bit more humble. A little bit more like, you know what? This church doesn't exist for me. It's actually much bigger than me. And I'm actually privileged to be a part of this house. I'm actually privileged to be on this soil, in a place that's ready to plant and make a difference in generations to come. Because as I went through this, I was just like, oh my goodness, I'm just a link in the story. I'm just a link. And some, I don't know about you, but sometimes we can think, oh, my, my life's got to be everything. It's got to be the whole kabang. But maybe is it okay for us to settle and just say, I'm happy to be a link, but I'm going to pick that responsibility up anyway. When you walk into Centerpoint, you just don't walk into another church on the north side of Brisbane that might be a little bit smaller than some of the bigger ones. You walk into a house, you walk into a field that has been planted, watered, pruned, replanted, watered, harvested for generations. That's the land that you walk in here today on. That's the house that you come into this place on. And I just feel privileged to be a part of it. I don't know about you, but I just feel privileged to be a part of this, whatever this chapter is and whatever fruit that it yields, whether in this life or the next, I just feel privileged to be a part of it. And I guess that's the communication that I want to give across this morning is that it's a privilege to be a part of this house. It's a privilege to be a part of this house. And my question to you today is what seed have you got in your hand? What are you planting? Now, this isn't all, all just about this house. It's not all just about the church, right? But in your life, what are you planting? Because we've all got seed. We've all got something to offer. But seed's kind of useless unless you put it in the ground, unless it's planted, unless it's invested, unless it's sown. You know, Jesus said, unless a seed falls to the ground and dies, it remains a single seed. If you want to see magic, plant a seed. It's unexplainable. How, how, could you, how could you understand the magic that is in a seed? You know, maybe you've been reluctant to invest into something because deep down you know that you won't see the harvest. 
Maybe it's a friendship. Maybe it's a relationship and you're a bit standoffy and you're like, I'm not willing to really invest into this because I'm, I'm afraid that it's not going to last. Maybe you don't trust that your investment will reap a harvest in that relationship. You know, maybe you've been reluctant to plant yourself in a community, in a church, because you're afraid of getting hurt, concerned that the return might not be as favourable as you'd like. Maybe you've been reluctant to start that business or take that initiative because you're afraid that it may never grow. Can I tell you that when it comes to the Kingdom of God and the Kingdom way of living, it requires faith. It just requires faith. You look at a seed, there is nothing you can do to make that grow except control some of the environment, maybe plant it. But the magic in the seed, we just got to believe that that's just how things work. There's faith when it comes to doing this kind of thing. Faith that you can trust again. Faith that God will work all things out for your good. Faith that He will provide your needs, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Faith that what you plant will reap a harvest in due time. That's the element we need to be able to live a life like this. Faith that God is who He says He is and He will do what He says He will do. It says in 1 Corinthians 3, 7, 9, so neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything. Do you feel small yet? <laughs> but only God who makes things grow. The one who plants and the one who waters have one purpose and they will each be rewarded according to their labor. Are you hearing me this morning? They will each be rewarded according to their labor. For we are co-workers in God's service and you are God's field, God's building. God is the one who created the seed and He's the only one that can make seed grow. You can plant it though. You can plant it. You can water it. You can prepare the soil. But leave the rest up to God. Have some faith that He's going to do what He says He's going to do. That He is who He says He is. That He is the Lord of the harvest. That He's the one that makes things grow. And let's make a difference with the smallest of seed that we have in our hands. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. I'm not going to give you a list of examples. You can assess your own life this morning and say, what have I got? What have I, what, what's in my hand? Is it, is it time? Is it energy? Is it ability? Is it finance? Is it thinking? What, what's your... Is it kindness? Is it love? You know, what, what's your gift and is it being planted? What's your seed and is it being planted? You know, in your home, could you love your family? Could you invest seed into your family without expecting to see the fruit of a return straight away? Without waiting for another compliment back? Could you love somebody with no strings attached and just say, you know what, this is kingdom thinking that I would plant regardless of whether I see the fruit. I'm just going to put the seed in there and trust that God's going to do something with it. You know, in the areas of your talent, it can be hard to go after something, to put yourself out there. But you know what, you say, God, this is what the seed is you've given me. I'm going to apply it. I'm going to go out there, I'm going to plant it in the ground, even though I'm nervous that nothing will ever happen. But I trust and I believe through faith that you're going to make things grow. Have faith and boldness and pursue what God has put on your heart to plant. Can I get the band up, please? You know, I've talked about church a little bit this morning in a great way, and I don't think an, un, uh, an accidental way for the body of Christ to invest seed is through the body of Christ, is through His house, is through the church. You know, the church is, it's God's only plan. It's God's hope for the world. If God wants to change a community, He's not necessarily going to plant an orphanage, He's going to plant a church. If somewhere needs God, they need a church. Because that's what changes communities, that's what transforms lives. It's planting something, it's not short term. It's an investment that slowly reaps a harvest and changes the environment. And I don't know about you, but that is something I want to be a part of. 
That's what we're all a part of here. Our mission to transform this community begins here with what we plant. And so firstly, I want to say it's super important that you are planted in a local church somewhere. If it's not here, somewhere. That you have faith and you say, I'm going to plant myself here and God, I'm going to trust that you're going to make things grow. I have faith that you will look after me, that you have my best interests at heart and that you'll make things grow. That's the first thing we need to do. The second thing we need to do is to be in touch and on board with what the house and the local church is doing, with the vision of the house. To not be unaware of what's going on and say, oh, five years later, I didn't even know what was going on. I just go there every Sunday. Could we get in touch with what is happening in that house we're planted? Could we know what is available for us to be sowing into, to be planting into? What's the next thing? What's what's God got for us next? How can I be a part of this? Be planted in a church and be planted in the vision of that church. And so if you if you haven't planted yourself in a in a church before, if you're still figuring out what to do here, could I encourage you to have faith this morning, to plant yourself, to plant the seed and trust that God will make things grow. Whether you see the return on investment or not, that you would be the kind of person that doesn't um, fear planting themselves but has faith in God and secondly can I encourage you to be in touch with what God's doing in this house with the opportunities for planting for the opportunities for seed the opportunities for investment you know we have so many things that we're planting this year that we've released on Vision Sunday. Who's excited about those things? They're great seed, but guess what? Seed needs to be planted. It needs a house that is prepared to say, you know what? I'm not going to just sit in the shade anymore. I'm going to grab some of the seed that is around me, hanging from the fruit in the branches, and I'm going to take it and I'm going to plant it, whatever it may be. We talked about the coffee shop, vacation care, potential of a second center point location in Brisbane, a uh, Bible college, a creative academy. They're some of the things that are in the heart of this house to go again for, to plant something that one day someone might just Google a Bible college and be like, oh, I'm going to go here and it changed their life. But guess where it's being planted? Right here, right now. Right here, right now. Maybe one day people will tell stories of the generation that's sitting right here. Maybe sometime in 20 years, someone's going to get up and have the same epiphany that I've had and talk about the people in this room and what we did. I don't know. Hopefully. Maybe we won't be a church or a congregation that repeats what's happened before, where we die in Hayran and get comfortable. Where we receive, we come in and we enjoy what has been planted here but then settle and eat the fruit and eat the seed. My question is, are you in touch with what's happening in this house? Are you involved in maybe a life group? Are you investing into the lives of your neighbor? Are you you exerting yourself and trying to just love someone else in the house? Are you serving? Are you on a team? Are you giving of your time, of your talent? Are you giving of your treasure? Are, Are you giving in this house? You know, we have so many areas in this house to be a part of the vision, to be involved in. As soon as I say music team, they're all going to cheer. They're going to be like, yeah, there's heaps of space in the music team. If you're a drummer, let us know. We have a brand new team that streams to everybody at home. And at the moment... It is just seed that is being planted in faith and saying, please grow. (laughs) Please. But we need some people to come and water that seed because we planted it. That's great. Tommy's up there. Tom uh, Kirk is, how old is Tom? 14. And he's up there producing the service, changing the camera angles. 
Yeah. I'm just gonna check. I'm just gonna check you're paying attention, Tom. So for this camera and for this camera, we thank you, Tom. <laughs> but if you're interested, it's it's pretty simple. It's a good way to get involved if you've got a mind for technology and pushing buttons like this. It's a great way to just get involved in the vision of what's happening here because there's a whole audience and community out there that are living on the internet. Service teams, getting involved in ushering, hospitality, kids team. There's just ways for us to make this place grow, become healthy and ensure that generations in ahead will have branches to sit in and shade to perch in that they may choose to invest again as well. And it's a great thing, even in our young adults, our young adults groups have doubled, our life groups have doubled at the start of this year to having twice as many groups as we had last year because there's some people that are just willing to say, I'm ready to invest, I'm ready to give. I've been in a group for a couple years and you know what, I'm ready to give. I'm ready to plant something. I'm ready to start something. I'm nervous no one will come. I'm nervous I'm not the right person for the job. But God, you've given me a seed and I'm going to plant it and I'm going to trust that you're going to see it grow. And so I want to encourage you to have a think about what you're, what you're planting right now. Are you, are you planted in the house? Are you connected to the vision? And are you planting things in your life and in your personal life because it's a kingdom mindset and not because you'll see the return you might just plant something for the sake of blessing someone else down the track. Amen? I might just pray. Father, we, we thank you that you've involved us in the vision of this house, that you would, that you would use us to build your church, to, to make a difference in this world. We thank you for bringing us along with your journey. And we pray that you would continue to stir the hearts and minds in this room and those watching online to be people that plant in faith, to be people that will leave a legacy, that will leave something for the next generation, that will shoulder our responsibilities here and now so that someone else doesn't have to. We pray that you bless what has been planted in this house, that there would never be a, a need for people to water in this house. In Jesus' name we pray.